So if you're new here, you should know that this channel is under a shadow ban. The people who run this platform are purposely blocking my numbers. So I need you to like, subscribe, and share to combat this. Thank you in advance. I love breakfast so much, I can have it any time of the day. I can have breakfast for lunch and even for dinner. Now, back home, my breakfast in New Orleans, coming from the deep south, uh, usually consisted of eggs, bacon, toast, hash browns, and grits, something that is very hard to find here in Mexico. But lately, I've been taking a break from all that. It's a lot of calories. And so the past, uh, well, the past two weeks now, it's just been a large, gigantic bowl of cereal, whole grain cereal, Integra. And I tell you what, you eat a big bowl of that every morning, you're pretty much good. So a little bit about me. I left the U.S. two years ago and relocated here to Mexico City. I've spent some time reflecting on my life here in Mexico and comparing it to my life back home in the U.S. Speaking of which, I should probably share that story. My dog Pepper and I arrived in Mexico City in December of 2020. I first arrived in La Condesa, Mexico. From there we went to Querétaro. Then we went to San Miguel de Allende. San Miguel de Allende has some of the best food in Mexico, hands down. So this is Cafe Bohemio. Come eat here, trust me. Gracias. Ah, bonito. Oh. I'm not easily impressed. I'm impressed with this place. Come here. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. And uh, from there I went to Guanajuato City. Just wonderful, wonderful college town. So I'm going to do it for the first time in seven months. I'm going to take a day trip to Guanajuato City because daddy needs a break. Guanajuato? on the board. Day two in Guanajuato City. It's only been a short time, but already Guanajuato City is kicking San Miguel's butt all up and down the street as far as likability. These are personal opinions. Some of you out there may have the opposite opinion, and that's cool. I've done my share of traveling. I've been to Europe, Southeast Asia, now Mexico, I am not easily impressed. So the fact that I feel this way about a city after only a short time, that says something. Guanajuato City rocks. You know, I was all set to go back to Mexico City, the place where it all started after my experience in San Miguel left such a horrible taste in my mouth. But I tell you, I may have to take a detour and uh, stay here in Guanajuato City for a while. Well, that was a fun day and a half here in Guanajuato City. Time to go home. I had a somewhat open itinerary with specific cities I wanted to visit. Querétaro, Guadalajara, San Miguel, you know, the usual. But in CDMX, I somehow lost track of time. 
So when I finally began to decompress, time had literally flown by. Three months? It felt more like three days. Okay, so why the anxiety? Well, I'm from New Orleans. What I'm about to say might rub some of you the wrong way. But honestly, I just couldn't wait to leave. I couldn't wait to leave America in general, and I couldn't wait to leave New Orleans in particular. Race relations are horrible. This is the city's dirty little secret, and no one wants to acknowledge it. Racial profiling and police violence was off the charts long before Black Lives Matter was even a thing. As a result, I myself have been harassed and discriminated against for most of my life. I've encountered police violence, and I have been falsely arrested several times. Something that I'm very passionate about that I think gets uh, overlooked in modern society is unity. And what I mean by that is people like you and me, just regular people like you and me, getting along and not being so divisive, not allowing ourselves to be divided along racial and color lines, gender lines. My passion is to somehow provide unity or at least live my life as an example of unity. My parents raised me to never judge another person, especially by their skin color, because look at me, you know, I'm a black guy. I've been judged by my skin color all my life, and my parents, whew. The years and the times that they grew up in, it was far worse than what I've uh, experienced. And let me tell you, I've experienced some nasty stuff, even in my hometown in New Orleans. So yeah, I'd like to promote the idea of unity and love and peace, because I think we have more in common than not. I think our differences are trivial. You know what I mean? That's my little girl, Pepper. She came with me from America. She's an American. should have been, but that's a story for another day. We're settling in now. Uh, Pepper's thirsty, I'm thirsty, but we're told not to drink the water. And so I decided to order some food. Uber eats, and I added, included in that order about four or five bottles of water. Wait a minute, what day is it? What day is it? It's Friday. Friday. You know what that means, right? It's time for a fun fact. Straight out of San Miguel. And today's episode is brought to you by Mexican rap music. Because why listen to regular rap music when you can listen to it in Spanish? If you move to San Miguel, at some point you're going to want to do laundry. Hot water is not necessarily a thing here. Even if you're lucky enough to own your own washer, unless those pipes are connected to a natural gas source, natural gas must be from all the frijoles. 
Unless it's connected, there's still no guarantee. Now, I take my clothing to the lavanderia. They wash, dry, fold, and even iron your clothes. I pay about 89 pesos, which is under five bucks right now, for a kilo's worth of cleaning. Don't worry, you're not gonna be required to use a washboard <laughs> and scrub like they did in the old days. Just know that when doing laundry, hot water is a luxury here. Or as one local told me, what are you, rich? If you're visiting here, it's not just about the language barrier. It's also about education level. I told you before that more than half of Mexicans never graduate high school. Now, this is something that you won't hear from other travel YouTubers here. But you hear it from me because, like I always say, I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and everything in between about life here in Mexico. I remember having conversations with a grown-ass adult men, 40 years old, 50 year old. I'm thinking to myself, is this grown-ass man crazy? And then I recall that point about high school. When you have that size of a population who doesn't graduate high school, well, that's going to translate into low literacy. Like I said before, if you thought it was bad in American schools, come and stay here for a year or so. Engage with the locals. Unlike, again, unlike with most travel YouTubers, I actually engage with the locals. I want to immerse myself deep into the culture. Um, sometimes I like what I see, sometimes I don't. But either way, I share that with you here on this channel. So just uh, my two cents on the language barrier. It's not all just about the language barrier. It's also about level of education, which translate into low comprehension skills. A few minutes ago, our Celaya candidate for Morena was murdered. It's something that makes us angry and shocked. The 38-year-old was the only female candidate in Celaya, one of the deadliest cities in the world, and had requested protection hours earlier. She was running for the governing party. These events are very regrettable because these are people who are fighting to defend democracy. She is the latest victim in an increasingly bloody lead-up to the June elections. A political consultancy group says 24 aspiring candidates have been killed since September. Two mayoral hopefuls even gunned down within hours of each other at the end of February. These events will not go unpunished. In President López Obrador's government, we are committed to protecting candidates for various elected positions. The growing control of drug cartels in Mexico proving a threat to candidates and democracy. In July of this year, I signed a rental agreement for a house located on Del Llano Street, number 44, in San Miguel. In August of this year, after a long and contentious disagreement with the property owner, Gabriela, I decided it was time to break the lease. I met with her lawyer to exchange the house keys for my 8,500 peso security deposit. What you are about to see is what happened next. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, look who showed up. Hey, you pushing me? No, she says, you, you say you don't want trouble? No, no, I don't want trouble. You want trouble? You want trouble? You can fool me. Money. I don't mind you. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, you, uh, so you good. Yeah, You're yeah. pushing me. Yeah. You're pushing me, asshole. I have your money, please. Yes. I, what Let the hell is going please. on here? She gets out filming okay. me and she doesn't want to be filmed? Okay. The money. Count the money. Please the quickly money. count. You're taking your time. Quickly count so I can go. Okay. So I can leave. I, I, I try to do it. Okay. Please again. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a half. Okay. Got it. Agree. Please, in English, is right. You right here. I receive ocho mil quinientos pesos mexicanos. Sí. Okay. Please. Here. The legend. I receive ocho mil quinientos pesos mexicanos. Please. And you have it here, eh? I'm a serious person. Okay. 
here? Use your money. You hear better? Hey, no. She's throwing stuff down. Now, you are better than her. How can you represent her? I only want to finish my job. How can you represent her, man? You just saw what she did. Negro. Sí, y que sí, negro. Negro y culero. What's going on here? Okay, I just gonna park right there. No, 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 you stay right here, motherfucker. Stay out here. I got a fucking nine millimeter, and I don't know whether you want it or not. But no, you yeah, I, stop I, right where you are. Yeah. Okay. Police are coming. Problem's not with you, but this son of a bitch. I didn't say nothing at all. So it appears that I'm being held hostage. I came here to collect my security deposit. I signed the release. And she showed up in the back seat of the lawyer's car, called me outrageous names, went into the apartment, went into the house, and then proceeded to throw things at me from the balcony. Just show them the video, right? Yes, yes. Okay. But I don't understand. They, the police came out here. Because they called them. Right. They called them, but the police was here, and it's they've been here. It's 30 minutes later. What What is the result? What, what is, <laughs> I really don't know, my friend. I don't know.